All right, everybody, and welcome back to the Power Comics YouTube channel. I am Evan Husney. We got a very, 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 very special episode for you guys today. I cannot believe we are joined uh, today uh, with somebody who is behind our most um, important discovery of the year, I shall say, uh, the <laughs> man behind the issue Power Comics number one. I'm pretty sure, hopefully, it's a one of one from 1969. Here in the house, we got Kurt, and help me with your last name, Kurt Schultz? Schultz. Just Schultz, yeah. All right. We got Kurt Schultz in the house, man. What's up? Welcome to the Power Comics Show. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for inviting me. I appreciate oh, of it. Of course, man. This is like Starstruck Central over here for us. So, <laughs> um, uh, And of course, let me uh, introduce my two dudes over here. We got, of course, our permanent celebrity guest, Benjamin Mara. Uh, hello, Ben. And um, oh. the head of all research here at Power Comics, uh, Mr. Gabe, Gabian Ruben Deichel. What's going on, man? How are you feeling about this? Bell shocked, star shocked, star whatever. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Very excited. Awesome. So, so Kurt, you know, um, a few weeks ago, I think it was, um, you might have seen the video we did about this comic book that you did from how many years ago? Uh, 54. Wow. 54 years ago. Lifetime. Yeah. Uh, you did this amazing comic, uh, illustrated and, uh, conceived and co-created, co-wrote, co-wrote this comic power comics. One that I only had known legend of for almost over a decade. I'd only seen a very low res image of it on the internet. And uh, we immediately swiped the hell out of it for our logo. Uh, <laughs> hashtag hope you don't mind um, because uh, there's no going back. <laughs> I see that. Think yeah. marker streaks and all. It's just so authentic. It is, man. It is. Because this thing that like me and Gabe and of course Ben, like this whole thing that we're doing here with like collecting and archiving these sort of forgotten, you know, self-published amateur works, you know, from decades past um you know it's, i mean we, we we truly love this stuff and when i saw that logo i immediately was like well this exemplifies everything you know i mean just the look of it the, the handmade quality of the logo the the perspective on it the color choice right like everything just scream to me power comics what we do so i think i just i think i just I, I snatched it right up because it was emblematic and then we find this issue I finally get a copy through a good friend of mine. I'd never seen it. And then we looked at it on the show, guys, and it was like it foretold every characteristic of these indie comics that we love here that we've been going through for the past several years. Like this is the Rosetta founding stone of <laughs> these types of uh, this type of, uh, you know, a niche thing that we're looking at. Right. This is it for sure. Yeah. So. I don't know, but anyway, Kurt, what was your immediate reaction to the finding out uh, that we had located this comic 54 years later, and then of course made some, uh, you know, deep dive video on it? <laughs> I was wary at first because this is something <laughs> I did when I was 12 years old. But whoa, I, yeah, I watched it. Whoa. I, I watched the the video that you did, and I thought that was very respectful, and you were you were very appreciative of the kind of work that young enthusiastic guys can do so oh boy are we ever yeah and wow 12 yeah. years old guys yeah that's that that's is so nuts. unreal that is yeah unreal. i want to get under the hood here and figure out what you did what everyone else did what was going on i want to know everything i want to pick it apart i want to get rid of all the mystery and by the <laughs> end not even want to look at it anymore it's well, really know, a masterpiece yeah. We'll uh, we'll leave some mystery because Link's got a lot of more information. But I tell you, I first learned about it from a, a friend of mine. I'd moved to, I'd moved to another part of town, and he was my good buddy through elementary school. And he said, "Hey, Kurt, there's this guy here starting a comic book, and he's living just three doors down from me." So I said, "Hey, Steve, I go let me come visit you." And I said, "How you doing, Steve? Hey, can we go over to that guy's house?" And we went over to that guy's house. And that guy was Link Yako, and he was going to do power comics. He said, I got this idea, and he showed me some of the done pages. 
And up until this point, I'd read comics and I'd drawn pictures, but I'd never put the idea together before Link showed me that it was actually a job that somebody could do. Wow. Mm. Wow. So, like, I, I owe a, a, a partial career to, to Link Yako because he says, look, Steve Ditko is the name of this guy who's drawing this thing. Wow. And he showed me all the different styles, and I learned about Gil Kane and Jack Kirby and then Neil Adams just blew my mind. So, yeah. Of course. That's amazing. Yeah. And yeah. we should say, too, uh, yeah, uh, Link Yako or Lincoln Yako, who is the, you know, co-creator, you know, uh, you, your friend. The that editor, the publisher, the, the mastermind. The, the Stan Lee. He is the Stan Lee. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the Stan Lee of Power Comics, we should say. Uh, he is only uh, equipped with a landline these days in order to... Uh, connect with us here um, and those who have been following us for a long time you you know well now that it's not our first landline we've had on the show but um, we sent him the information we're waiting to see if he will dial in he might dial in during this broadcast and if he if he does we'll of course uh, let him in and uh, integrate him right into the story but uh, for now let's take a look at this because this is amazing so uh, let, let, I'm going to pull up the comic here so you were um, 12 years old, and this is in Ann Arbor, Michigan, is where you're talking yes. about? Yeah. And, yeah. and so you guys, uh, he, so you went over to his house, and like, had you already been interested in comics? Like, had you already been reading them and were into them? I'd been reading, by then, I'd been a couple of years into reading Batman and Flash and stuff like that. A lot of a lot of DC, and it was uh, Link that showed me that Marvel had something to offer, too. Hmm. Where, oh. uh, where DC was doing all the science and the kind of cool explanation stuff, which appealed to the teacher side of me. Marvel yeah. was doing this emotional stuff, and it was, like, really affecting. And, oh, poor Peter Parker, what's he going to do next? You know? Right, mm -hmm. right. Exactly, exactly. And he opened and my eyes. That's amazing. And so you guys are in, in at 12 years old. You're what? 7th grade? Is that what it is? Like, uh, yeah, something. just going into 7th grade by then, yeah. And uh, wow. he's 14 or 15, maybe 16. I, I I can't remember. He was just he was this older guy who knew a ton of stuff and he showed me that uh, on the first day I met him, he showed me some of the pages of X the Unknown Factor. And I mm. think he even had the cover started by then. Wow. And, uh, and wow. I said, wow, that's really cool. I was just so, just, it just geeked me out for days and weeks on end. And so had you Full already been drawing at that point? Like, oh, yeah. Drawing, you know, people and animals and stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> I think I'd attempted a superhero that was modeled on the old Green Lantern by Gil Kane. Hell yeah. And, you know, so he had a ring power, but. Yeah, I, I couldn't get past, you know, page one or two. I'd start a number of great ideas and then I just couldn't get any farther. So, wow. And then so Good. he he uh, he gets you on board for this. What was the what was the what was the process of convincing you? Well, to he said work I. He said, I hear you're pretty good. So I brought some of the drawings along. He said, okay, sure. And that really surprised me. I didn't think, I mean, I'm, I think I'm just a 12-year-old. But he said, yeah, it's pretty good. So I thought, cool. Amazing. So what kind of superhero you got? So I I blenderized Little John from Robin Hood and uh, put some Steve Ditko flourishes, I thought, on it and created Quarterstaff. And he said, here, you yes. got some room right on the cover, right here. I said, okay, nice. cool. <laughs> and that's right here. Yeah, quarter staff. Yeah. We're gonna we're definitely gonna get into quarter staff. So, so any any look particular at this cover here. Look at yeah. this cover, man. You gotta look at this cover. He's got the little dotted line right down the middle of the street, and he's punching out <laughs> mm -hmm. Bog. Oh, Bog, that interdimensional traveler. You know, he needs a, a good hit. <laughs> what was street. yeah? Like, what was your memories of this cover, or any any director's commentary on the on the cover? Did you? draw this like like did, like did you both draw this or no this was i'd say this was three quarters done he had it uh wow. penciled and inked and then colored and and he showed me the kind of markers he was using and i thought wow those colors are really bright because i'd only been using crayons and pencil crayons till then i thought i gotta get me some of those too so i learned about <laughs> art stores from link um mm. yeah but he he had this amazing perspective and we're looking down and i like 
I don't know how to do that. Wow, man, look at that. And there's there's a guy who's excited and he's so we got a business guy and we've got a hippie guy and we got a yeah. damsel who might be in distress. The hippie and he's guy is amazing. With his, yeah, yeah, the hippie guy's amazing. Uh yeah. I'm not sure what the name of the store is. Oh, maybe it's Roebuck, like Sears Roebuck or something. Mm. You can see the R and the K. Oh, the yeah. oh right. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Fud Ruckers? Is that what that says? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, Fud Ruckers. It could be Sears Roebuck because they were still big back then. Right. No, and then no, you right. look at Yako's signature. Yeah. Here? You mean? Yeah. Here. It was yeah. so cool because he'd, he'd made it out of little cuneiform wedges and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Just like Frank Frazetta. It looked just like Frank Frazetta. I'm telling oh, you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. year old, it was right. just like, okay, got to get me a cool logo. Oh, how am I going to sign my name in a cool way? I never and figured this- that one out. And this car, of course, was killer as well, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Takes me right back to what Steranko, when Nick Fury, agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., had his sure. first flying oh, car. Yeah. And, you know, the, sure. the wheels whip up. And, yeah, that was cool. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So amazing. Amazing. So as soon as you saw this, you're like, I'm on board. Like, let's I'm go. All, totally on board. Uh, how soon can we print? Let's go. Let's go. Let's yeah. go. And he's oh. like, no, 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 Kurt. Everything's got to whatever. But he also showed me that he had stacks of letters and emails because he was part of this mail fanzine, right? They were mailing yeah. back and forth from Hawaii and California and whatever. Mm. Um, he was connected to a He was a connected guy. Yeah. And his dad, his dad worked for uh, a number of, or for an advertising agency in Detroit and I guess oh, had wow. a way of getting the printing done. Ooh, color oh. cover, man. Color cover. Because yeah. we couldn't afford that on our own, not with that's our key. allowance. That's yeah, that's key. key. I got the right. color cover. That's cool. Yeah, because you know, sometimes in the other, you know, quote unquote, I'll use air quotes, power comics that we cover on here, they don't always get the color cover um, treatment. So that's great. No, but it's nice to have a dad who knows somebody who knows somebody. So, yeah, got to have it. Got to have it yeah. these days for sure. So um, he was just he wanted to coordinate things and he had everything coming in from all over and people had different ideas and they were contributing stuff. But of course it's all happening by mail. So it's, it's it. months, not, not weeks or days or minutes. So wow. I love it. I love it. All right. So let's, uh, let's go to this. You, uh, oh, sorry. Print. Go ahead, Gabe. What was that the run? is a good question. I'm thinking the run was a, uh, 300. That's what's oh, in wow. my memory. Yeah. It was probably attached to the tail end of another commercial job, and the printer's like, "Okay, here you go," and and there we there we had it, and that's that's at the point where I can kind of say to you, I I still have a proof. Okay, here's a proof. Oh oh, wow! Wow! All right, all right. Um, What's it worth? Yeah. How much do you (laughs) want? Yeah. Name your price. (laughs) 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 Not Not for sale. But no, oh. this proof copy was it wow. was much the same except the paper was cheaper inside. They didn't use the white, the full glossy white. They used oh. a kind of a brown paper, and oh, they, I think they I skipped that. they skipped an entire uh, section. So I started drawing on that back when I was twelve. <laughs> oh, amazing! Oh, oh yeah, so that's got them the... being barbarians, right? They're fighting off whatever. I was yes. reading a lot of Conan the Barbarian and visualizing things there. <laughs> the, wow, not the amazing. comic book, but the the Perry yeah, Howard, with the great yeah, the books, yeah, yeah, the yeah, great Frank Frazetta covers where you oh. just dream in Technicolor just from one cover. It's the best, Man. yeah, the best, the best. Wow, that's amazing that you still have that. Wow, incredible. Um, <laughs> there's going to be a lot of people DMing you for that, I'm sure. Okay, <laughs> um, not for sale, not for sale. Okay, <laughs> and uh, the. Uh, <laughs> The opening splash page here. So this is you, man, right? This is, uh, this yeah, is an original. This is probably the last thing that I did for that because like, um, he says, I don't know how it worked, Kurt, but I got an empty front page. Oh, wow. <laughs> I need something to balance out. I said, all right, fill I'll it up. up with something. And I love the center spreads that Neil Adams was doing on Dead Man at the time. Oh, yeah. Because right? mm. you'd open it out, and there'd be this center spread with two guys fighting on top of a Ferris wheel. And I thought, okay, I'm going to do a center spread, even though I don't have a center spread. So, and right. then I start, so I draw one guy fighting off a, a bunch of other people, and there was going to be thousands of people coming down from the mountains. And the <laughs> more I drew, the tireder my hand got. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. So then it's really well, sparse, but it's cool. I, I I love that about it. You know, it's amazing. And um, thank you. And so is this I mean, kind of like, yeah, go ahead. Another yeah. way this is a precursor to every other power comic. The one we did last time, 
had a blank first page, which is very common yep. in yeah. all these comics. And to find out that this one was... Yeah. He had somehow <laughs> forgotten a you know, blank first page, but then you luckily did this masterpiece. Yeah. Just adds to it. It's amazing. Uh, and so this is a Conan sort of inspired character here, I'm guessing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Going and, for it. And then, yeah, and he's fighting. It's like there's there's carbon. These guys are made out of carbon, and he's cool. fighting them off. And I think at the end, or when I got a little older, I thought, oh, that's me fighting off my own demons. <laughs> so oh, anyway, cool. Trying to trying to keep myself a little, a little above the fray, but it you know, didn't always work. Right. But there's a lot of patterning. Like I still like pattern, and 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 it's in there, including that basket weave, which you commented on the, on the last yeah. video. That yeah. kind of uh, basket weave thing, which mm-hmm. Steve Ditko would do in Doctor Strange. And I thought that sure. was so cool. How do mm. I do that? How do I get all those lines? And and I figured that problem out. But then I'm like, eh, I don't care about that. I, I figured that <laughs> one out. I want to move on. I don't want to ever do that again. Yeah, New well, that's challenges. Fun. That's part of the fun, though, of like when you're this age and you're 12 and you're deconstructing like how everybody, you know, what what everybody else is doing that you're admiring, like Steve Ditko, you're kind of reverse engineering these things and you just have to kind of figure out how they do it, these techniques, because no one at that time is telling you, you know, Mm -hmm. um, you have to kind of figure it out for yourself, right? So No, first um, convention with Detroit Triple Fanfare, 1972. So that's that's three years later. Right? That's right. Actually, I ah, meet Dan Adkins and Neil oh. Adams' services were auctioned off, and the top bidder got him to draw a giant poster of Neil Adams, hundred bucks. Yeah, wow. that's crazy. God. It's <laughs> sad to think about how much original art was going for back then. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> getting a time machine for sure. Um, <laughs> all right, so then we got power comments here. Another thing that I'm going to steal from this comic. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> um, it's incredible. Uh, love it. And um, anything to say about this here? Because it's saying, you know, I mean, obviously it's from Link. Uh, yeah. And he's saying, you know, here it is. Took six months to do. Shout out you. Shout out Bill, Bob, Dan, Chris, you know, everybody. And um, yeah, it's awesome. And here he does talk about the, he talks about the Detroit Triple Fan Fair right there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so he's talking about that. And he's, you know, so any memories come with this letter, this drawing, anything? Uh, the drawing is, is you know, of course, Captain Marvel inspired by um, uh, Gil yeah. Kane's version. Because by then, yeah. uh, Gil Kane had done one. It was before Starlin. And then Colin Lau, I think, was uh, somebody he'd contacted who, who was a prolific drawer from Hawaii. And he was going to do... In Power Comics number two, there was going to be the frog, uh, and right. um, oh, yeah. the and and so we see references to the frog throughout this. But uh, wow, I, you know we're not we're not even crediting Marvel or anything. We're just saying here's yeah. some fan art. We love Captain Marvel, and yeah, uh, amazing, amazing, amazing. Uh, oh, that, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. So then, so then he would he would mail this in, and you'd put it in the book, right? Uh, yeah, he yeah. he sent. Uh, I can recall seeing his originals. He penciled everything on Manila tag. It was penciled <laughs> on Manila tag, and I thought, well, okay, that's stiffer paper for sure, but yeah. it's not. It's not the same quality. Uh, anyway, yeah. Wow. Well, that's cool. Yeah, it was all right. All right, so here we go. <laughs> Quarter staff time. Oh, um, yes. No. <laughs> the best. Oh no, yes. This is the best one. This is man. Amazing. <laughs> I'm partial to the floating head dead dad detective thing we're going to get to a little later on, but oh, I do yeah, love I, I do love me some quarter staff. So what, it, it, t- walk us through the process of this. Is this a, your um, original idea? Is Link co-writing this? Tell us the yeah, origin story. Yeah, so I, I'm, and this is still true. I love the drawing bit. Moving these characters along and having stuff happen to them, I don't know. It's, I'm not as interested in, but I love the drawing bit. And so I say, okay, I love uh, Little John from Cor- uh, from Robin Hood, and that's what this is. He's an update on that. And uh, he's uh, he's got chemically enhanced powers, kind of like the Creeper, kind of like uh, some of the other Steve Ditko guys. But he's a you know Batman fighting the bad guys. And then uh, all of the writing, all the dialogue is Link. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and I think at the time, I drew a bunch of it. And I think I even had inked a bunch of it. And they said, 
oh, okay. And then he got out the whiteout and made space for the balloons. <laughs> <laughs> and and literally whiteout. I mean, literally like the type, that really crusty white that you would use to cover, yes. uh, mm -hmm. cover bad uh, typing right. back in the day. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Yeah. That's amazing. And he loved a flare. He would go, use a flare, black flare pen, which was a very early soft felt tip pen. So uh -huh. yeah. you know, by the end of its run, it's getting thicker and thicker. It starts super thin, and then it just gets all muffed out, and you just go get another one. But anyway. <laughs> and, so, uh, yeah, he's us... writing it all. Okay. Yep, yep. And, and he uh, showed me about uh, Zipatone. Right? That's what I was going to ask about. Zipatone in the upper right-hand corner. Yep, yeah, this great. here and here. Yeah. Oh, oh, sorry. Yep. Yep. Uh, here, and yeah. Quarter staff. I think I got to letter the quarter staff logo. Amazing. And of course, I I mm. borrowed from his uh, whatever that is, where they're shooting off into the their solid uh, lined quarter staff. It's quarter staff. I. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love and it. And then uh, on panel four, Link is doing the foreground character. Uh, I think oh. his name mm. is Savage by Gil Kane had come out by then. Uh -huh. And his name is Savage was an independent <laughs> project from Gil Kane. And he's got always the bad guys are running away, and, you know, flop sweat everywhere. And right. suddenly, uh, yeah, quarter staff is going to chase him down. Trash can, clang. Oh, I got yeah. to letter the, the sound effect too. So amazing. <laughs> I love it. Love it. All right, let's check the next page here. All right. And as we pointed out, you know, we love a good sparse montage. Uh, I love this page. Me too. <laughs> me too. And um, I had to ask, because the thing that I love about this conceptually, it's such a, you know, 12-year-old kind of, or, you know, however the average age between you guys sort of idea, like very childlike imagination to come up with an idea of a guy who's got his suit in a, in his quarterstaff, you know? Like, in his quarterstaff, so, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> You know, and I, I love that about this because I wish I could come up with ideas like that now. Um, but oh. what what was the like? Do you remember? I mean, obviously, Daredevil's got to be somewhere in there, maybe. Yep. Um, yep. But what else? Like, do you remember what inspired the idea of his suit being uh, inside his staff? And then, oh. of course, this amazing <laughs> him trying to fit it on his body here. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> oh man it brings up so much i don't know embarrassment but fun and energy uh it was uh flash you know mark carmen infantino's flash he would press the ring and his uh, suit would just shoot out but oh, of course yeah. i'm trying to be right. right everything's logical and explainable so i i <laughs> want it to be something that he has to you know deliberately get out and deliberately pull on and he's even right. pulling on the shoes and stuff and i think link called for a montage and I like, okay, cool. montage, yeah, right. What the hell is that? What is a montage? You know? <laughs> <laughs> what is a montage? <laughs> I love that. And it was years before I figured, oh, you know what? If you if you draw things even a second time, they get better. You get more of a plan. Because <laughs> so I just drew right on the paper, right, with no plan whatsoever. Okay, there's a guy here, and there's a guy here, and i got to remember to leave lots of space because I don't want everything crossing into it, confusing <laughs> people. So, yeah, Amazing. it's all first time, perfect, right? <laughs> Yeah, I love it. Exactly right. <laughs> oh, Perfect page. Long that's faces, the, short faces. That's the best faces. way to do it, I think. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. the best approach. Absolutely. Who cares model. about planning? Just yeah. wing it. Just just go for it. Yeah, because you might not finish it if you don't, you know? Um, that's right. Exactly. Especially at 12. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, or any age. Um, of course, we and love this, too. crashing through a skylight. Oh, Batman's crashing through a skylight all the time. So yep. quarter, quarter steps totally has to. And yep. then Jim Steranko's uh, also uh, sending Nick Fury through all kinds of things. Definitely. With these great long thighs with all the yes. great bold, you know. <laughs> yeah. Before He's kind of doing was... a Kirby thing with that, you know, a little bit. Yeah. 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 And, and again, with the peace fingers, I guess that's um, like it's on the cover, too. <laughs> the peace fingers are on the cover. Mm. Wow, I did not, not notice sure that. I'm not sure why it is. Yeah. Anyway. Why not? It's 69, baby. <laughs> You know, it's, it's uh, summer of love. Everything's about peace. Even when We're talking about, about the summer of love with this book here, you know. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, oh, another Crash, great. She land. Yeah, another great page here. Oh, and <laughs> weren't we sort of debating the origin of this, guys? <sighs> yeah. I'm not sure your, where it started. Yeah, what was your inspo, if you remember, for like the like tumbling action oh. montage? 
That seems like a DC Here's trick late, too. Maybe. I mean, yeah. It, l- let me see. Uh, I don't like years later. I, I, I can remember John Romita Jr. doing a Spider-Man uh, page mm-hmm. that was beautiful, kind of like this. But yeah, I, no, it just seemed. You know what? It was. It was laziness. <laughs> Get, getting out the ruler and drawing yeah. the borders all the time and making sure yeah. they're straight straight and everything sure. parallel because i yeah. it's not like i have a t-square right i'm just right. trying to I'm like well the borders get in the way let me just go with it, it right yeah i think that's probably laziness more than anything it's inspiring and of course <laughs> got to mention the guy who's cracking both kneecaps here as he's uh mm-hmm. love this <laughs> Love this. Well, that seems <laughs> totally realistic. When you punch yeah. somebody like that, they're the <laughs> and yeah. down they go. Oh, brutal. <laughs> Brutality. Um, Brutality. Amazing stuff here. And then this is interesting. I do remember now as I'm, I'm looking at this again. This character here, uh, uh, remind me his name again. Uh, does he have a name? Oh, I don't think. Oh, Mort. Monsieur Mort or Monsieur oh, yeah, Mort. Monsieur, or he's yeah. Mr. <laughs> Death or whatever. Yeah, he's like French or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. He just kind of steps into. Oh wait, wasn't is it? Oh, it's here. Yeah, he steps just yeah. accidentally back into the this console here, which I I can see is a kind of Stranko thing, maybe too a little mm-hmm. bit. And he steps yeah. into this console, and then he inadvertently uh, electrocutes himself. Gotta love that as the as the sto- the cliffhanger well, here. Yeah, quarter staff has done so much damage to this uh, high 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 cost laboratory that uh, wires, random wires, are falling all over the place and. He gets zapped, and that way the hero has not killed the bad guy. Right, right. Oh, sorry. Right, right. Got it. So then you can <laughs> continue onward and keep it yeah. going. And, and then, of and by then, just that, just that one panel there with the guy with the gun. By yeah. by then, um, Link is a huge fan of Wallace Wood, Wally Wood, and he's shown oh, me Wally Wood. And I said, okay, I'm doing all my side lighting as as much as I can. Mm. that's cool it's amazing how long it actually took to get it done like because it's like i was so excited about it but at the same time i didn't want to ruin it by doing it all in one day (laughs) and so you guys like like yeah i mean you know you're you're so young and and you're already like you guys are into wally wood and you're into ditko and you're into like gil you know you're into all these names like i mean that's I mean, well, not a lot of the people we talk to, who, you know, when we interview people who make these kind of comics were that well versed in Wally Wood at 12. Right, Ben? Well, I they're, mean, they're thinking about the yeah. art, you know, it's not just about the character. We hear a lot of these guys talk about, oh, the the characters they're inspired by, but they're, they're not like, yeah, getting so excited by the artist and the styles, you know, and it's really interesting. I mean, I can't yeah. believe that you're 12 years old doing this. this well, is but the. And yeah. a lot of that's Link. I had no clue about that stuff, right? I saw yeah. those names and I didn't connect them at all. And he connected the dots for me very, very quickly because he had a great comic book collection and he collected connected those dots. And, and Damn. Uh, it, so, I, you know, his dad was into media and, and mm. uh, maybe kind of pushed him in the right direction. But uh, Right. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And he, um, yeah, I mean, because, oh, I, I guess also Wally Wood did Daredevil as well, too. So. Right. Must oh, be, yeah. Some really so good that, Daredevil. So that, that yeah. must have also been because there's influence in this story with that, too. Um, amazing. Uh, and then here we get the cliffhanger, man. <laughs> uh, it looks like the place is going to blow. So he leaves <laughs> and he staggers to his split. feet. And that's uh-huh. it. Yeah, I, Morte. But I have to do right. a Gil Kane face. He's looking at his giant face down there with the Gil Kane face. Because that right. happened in Green Lantern all the time. Right. Ooh. Amazing. Yeah. But again, first time I draw it, I don't go back and redraw it and put it in a better place. <laughs> composition? What's this no. composition you speak of? Yeah. Right. 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 Awesome. Yeah. And so that's the first story. That's yep. Porter Staff. Okay. Yep. And now we're getting into now this isn't you guys, right? This is This is Spectra thirteen. So Link wrote it and inked mm. it and Bill Magdowski penciled it. Wow. And- and, and I Bill? never met Bill, but I think Bill was from Detroit, so okay. he brought oh, wow. in pages once in every once in a while. Yeah. Cool. So, so you weren't involved in this much, so we can kind of see. No, by I, it. I, I, I'd like. Why are they all looking like Mister Spock? Yeah, because <laughs> uh, this is you know this they is are. right off of the very first Star Trek, and, sure. and definitely he wanted to do that, so it was space space 
space. Definitely. I love this art. Yeah, it's yeah. beautiful. It yeah. is. It is. It is. It's very nicely done. I mean, uh, he knows anatomy. He knows. He knows the composition thing. It's mm-hmm. really cool. Yeah. Love it. This was very fantastic for to me. Here. Yes. Or yeah. 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 Um, I remember saying that when we were looking at it before. Because I yeah. think they were going to gain powers in issue two from the the meteorite that's rolling. Uh, down the hill is it, does it oh oh yeah yeah that that makes sense that's yeah. the cliffhanger yeah. yeah i think they were that gonna makes gain sense some that so makes sense like they were super scrolls but on the good side yes no but that scrolls. boulder yeah <laughs> and so like w- did any art get finished for issue two or did anything ever happen or just did it pretty much stop after this oh <sighs> sigh <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to bring up. I'm 12 years old. I desperately want this to continue. I'm just as high as anything. Uh, Link turned 16, 17. There's girls. There's other stuff going on. <laughs> oh, yeah. There are. Uh, he yeah. turns. Yeah. There are. There's some girls out there. I really wanted this to go on. I drew. Uh, yeah, I drew a second story. And I think oh. he had some things. But no, we did, he just didn't. He did come out with Power Comics number two. But it was only in the Indicia because the whole thing was called Tales of Incredible Blood, I believe. Oh, he went to he whoa. To where's that comics. at? <laughs> That's amazing. And then did he actually wind up publishing that? I believe so. That was all black and white because by then I don't think his dad was <laughs> too keen on keen supporting. Keen on the color? Damn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I wonder where that is. We got to get that tracked. Yeah. And, then, and then does any of your art from... Uh, uh, a supposed issue number two exists any, any longer? I remember drawing, uh, say, T. Cas- T. T. Casey Brennan, who was an Ann Arbor writer, uh, older guy, I guess. He wrote a script for something called Papa Blues. And huh. the guy was a heroin addicted uh, question style guy. Ooh, and oh, cool. I'm 13 or 14. I'm still not, I'm not, okay, Link, you want to do this? I want to draw. That's fine. I'll do this. But I'm still kind of like, I don't know about this. This isn't right. what Batman would do. This isn't what Green Lantern <laughs> would do. Wow. So I, I drew that. I It may have been in that second issue, but uh, I don't remember much past drawing it and turning it in. So, But it might not be like in a closet somewhere nowadays. Oh, I don't have it. No, I oh, okay. I... I I disavowed all knowledge of yeah. things that weren't about superheroes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, let's let's get to my favorite story in the uh, in the whole issue here. Mm. Now, this is X, the unknown factor. Um, yep. And is this your art here on this as well, too? Uh, no, that is all Link. This is this is probably wow. the first page that I saw when I went over, and he had this all, all origin story. He had a first version already drawn, and then this is his redraw of the of wow. the first origin story. It's amazing. He, he wanted to condense it. I remember he had it over two pages. He said, "No, no, I got more story later, so I I condensed the whole thing." That's what I remember anyway. Using the wow. zipatone, you know, he's putting patterns and and side lights on all the, on the face of his uncle, mm-hmm. his ghostly yeah. uncle. Yeah, real specter origin. He's using the, the, the flare pen to ink this? Yeah, yeah. A lot of flare pen. Wow. Um, sometimes nice. ballpoint pen. <laughs> yeah, you can see oh, that wow. a little bit. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I'm yeah. surprised. That's yeah. amazing, yeah. Love how he's just kind of little little hits of the zip of tone for these these uh, framed yeah. pictures here. Yeah. And, <laughs> on the windows. The window. and, yeah. and, oh, know, my God. Lampshade. It's a little bit over here, you know, <laughs> like it's so cool. <laughs> love that. Love it. So yeah. cool. And just obviously, and boom, I love that. You know, yeah. the flowers. Yeah. Lo- oh, yeah. Yeah. Boom. Page one, he's born. And I, and I also love just to like anything with like, you know, a floating head talking to another person is instantly like, okay, you got my attention, you know, on mm-hmm. anything, you know, like if it's if it's this or if it's like a Thailand exploitation film from the 70s, you know, right. like it has that Mondo <laughs> kind of vibe to it. And especially when you zoom out and look at just like the the like composition of the entire page, it's like you're seeing like 12 heads. You know, on this. Yeah, that yeah, bottom like, left floating head is mm-hmm. so haunting. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Yeah, <laughs> totally. 
totally totally you tell me there's a ghost uncle and something i'm i'm there man that's all yeah ghost (laughs) yes yeah killed by that robber last night (laughs) have you continue the work yeah love that love that and so the actual please note however please note however the background all that work on the window casing in the frame right right yeah it's yeah. there to show us this is reality. Every single yeah. page is happening in reality because it's a real right. window casement. <laughs> right, right. Very and do you remember? Totally. And then, do you remember any inspiration specifically for the the hero, the X hero? Like, was um, that based on I, anything or the guild guild queen on the art? Uh, mm-hmm. I can see that. No, you know, I, Link was very. Uh, he was usually pretty mysterious about the origin of the ideas and the stories Love for it. him anyway. He wanted to be opaque fake. about it. So that was cool. Love it. But you could see that the art was Gil Kane and, and he was keen on Gil Kane. I cool. love the flip in the hair. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Very and distinct. Then, very distinct. And Gil Kane is like popping hard off to go hard in 69. Yeah. Like he's he's killing it, right? Yeah. I mean, he's he must oh, have been yeah. doing. Beautiful. Uh, was he doing Warlock yet in 69? Uh, not quite. I Maybe think not he's yet. still in transition, moving over to Marvel, where he ten- ends up taking over all the covers. Uh, yeah. Early 70s. Yeah. Right. But he, he's wrapping up a great run on Gil- on Green Lantern. And, uh, you, wow. you know, it's hard to go off model when your hair is like that. You always yeah. know who you're looking at. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Very true. And then kind of a different vibe here for this. This might be the ballpoint pen inking we're seeing here, right? Like Yes, I think so. Yeah. He wanted yeah. something finer and especially with the shading, he was not happy with what it was. And then we had some letraset. He got some letraset from his dad. So wow. the X is letraset and then battle mm-hmm. is letraset and then yep. the Yako is letraset. Yeah. Of Good course. old old English. Yeah. Of Amazing. course. Love that. Cool. So yeah. Amazing here. Now he's battling Imagine. this guy, Bog. Yeah, Bog. This is the cover Bog. story. You know, I'm so happy. Yeah, it's the cover the story. Cover story. He held oh, off. So bizarre. The best. So bizarre. And then, uh, yeah, this, this is, is the least least trip. like thought out of the narratives of any of the comics in it, which is so interesting that he slapped it on the cover. You know, this is like his excuse to get a big. Sky battle going on, you know, <laughs> which I love. Yeah. But, and yet, well, this is, I think, yeah. the last one he did. Like, it, it seemed to me that like, I, got, I would stop by his house once a month or once every couple of weeks. And it seemed to me that he would do about a page a month, mm. which was wow. baffling to me because I, I'm <laughs> like, I, I want to do a page every day, please, you know. Mm-hmm. But yeah. uh, he would do about a page. Month. But then he was doing all this other stuff. He was corresponding with people and he was trying to figure out this thing and that scheme. He always had a lot of stuff going on. So and this is another pretty tripped out page here. A mm-hmm. lot going on in yeah. terms of the panel direction. <laughs> yep. And uh well, that's just a crazy image to me. I love it. <laughs> and the vapor guys is where he you see it's revealed that he turns into vapor but it's like mm-hmm. i'm a little bit too much vapor because i might blow away man <laughs> you know which is also very like <laughs> you know right. you know a little uh it still hurts to get punched when you're vapor yeah <laughs> right <laughs> yeah. I, there's still nerve endings mixed into that vapor right yeah <laughs> <laughs> love this too awesome it's great this is cool too. This kind of weird geometric punch uh, effect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Here, the ping. You know. That is very unusual. That. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, Steve is. Ditko has his has it had his own. He'd have the six thick brush strokes that yeah. would all right. uh, radiate out, and right. and Gil Kane had his own, and and Kirby had his own. So I, I think basically that's Link saying, yes. you know, this is mine. That's this is cool. my way of doing it. I love that. Yeah. That's a good detail. That's a good detail. Yeah. So, and then here's the last page. Yeah. Just these layouts are so bizarre. There's so much going on here when you just look mm-hmm. at this, right? It's a fight scene that's literally gone on for four yep. pages now, I think. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I love it. Yeah. yeah. Hours later, whew, finally. So he fell down and he's been out and he stands by his side waiting for him to recover. 
I love that. I know it's very posy. It's like it's got this like, okay, we just fought and I hope you're okay and like shake hands. You know, like <laughs> yeah. I was getting worried about you because you've been like laying there forever. <laughs> yeah. It's very sweet. It's very sweet. And then they're like, Oh wow, and then these other guys in another world are like, Well, these guys or this guy just beat the other guy and we gotta something has to be done he, for that. Yeah. Well, Ming the Merciless here, his pride is offended, right? Right. Wait, mm-hmm. a mere earthling has bested Rigel's champion? How yeah. dare he? Right. We're going to have right. to go to war. And you see here a hint of uh, Power Comics number two in the war with Rigel. Uh, X, the unknown factor, was going to take the top off of his uniform. He was going to have the free hair thing. Oh, <laughs> oh nice. nice. No, he was going to keep the goggle eyes, and he was going to move the X from the prominent X across the chest over to right. the side. Oh, right. War with, got to be dressed well for your war with Rigel. That's cool. Amazing. That's awesome. Great detail. Another great detail we never would have known. And then we get a few, uh, I guess, are, are, are whose are these? Are these all Yakos? Oh, no. uh, these are all people that Link was corresponding with. Of course, Link mm-hmm. has got a sort of semi steranko in the lower right. But then, right. yeah, in the lower right, uh, you know, uh, we're on the space station and we're running in a big hurry to stop something somewhere. Probably the sirens are blaring and he has to do that. <laughs> then there's a Fred Hembeck, which I didn't know until years later. And Fred Hembeck, of course, has got all the funny stuff in Marvel for years and years and years. Wow. Right. Mm. That's amazing. That's he was amazing. part of that Great fan one. crew. I yeah. love that, that poster. This one? Uh, John? Yeah, yeah that one there. Yeah. So he's, yeah. he's like, yeah, I'm going to get you. Uh, Christopher J. Goobelman. I never met him, but uh, I think Frank Bruner was the main inspiration there. I can see Because him. there would be some set of shading, and, and, and then, of course, Frazetta inspires both of them. So Yeah. yeah. It almost kind of looks like a Wrightson thing, too. Almost a yeah. Bit. yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Wrightson was going big by then. And on the right hand side, you have John Anoda, who was a medical student at, at uh, in Ann Arbor at the University of Michigan at the time, and cool. somehow Link connected with him. I can remember we we stopped to visit with him in one of the Michigan Union uh, meeting places or something, and he was a big Frazetta fan fan too. You can see in the yeah well, totally. rights in Frazetta, yeah, yeah for sure. So that's cool. And then a little bit of. Uh editorial here on uh i guess yep. yeah, killer cane you're talking about killer cane <laughs> oh that's cocaine <laughs> i don't know what the, cocaine i just got that <laughs> you guys well um he's, he's trying to impart the knowledge that he has now about comic books right he's uh yeah. he's a, a knowledgeable guy yeah right yeah hey, he's a jim steranko effect yeah right and then neil adams yeah he knows what's going on and then uh I, I any, any, think, yeah go ahead yeah so i i think at this point like link has done the page count and he's filled everything except this page so he's like okay i've got kurt doing one i'll do another one so he did it with typing and then uh positioned all of the things that he'd received uh all together and made a collage out of those as well cool Bob and Cosgrove then, blew me away when he sent that in the mail. I thought, wow, that's so professional, man. I wish I could draw like that. <laughs> yeah. W- that which one cool. is his? Oh, here? Yeah. Uh, that that guy, one, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That probably inspired the the new look, uh, X the Unknown Factor for sure. Power Comics 2. Mm-hmm. And then you can see Fred Hembeck has done a um, uh, yeah. Black, Black Panther. Panther. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then um so what is the frog? Like did you know what the what the frog was going to be cuz that's mentioned as going to be He, he a- was going to be your underwater submariner aquaman guy, only he cool. was mysterious and he would fight crime. Uh I guess it would be a well-rivered city that he would fight crime in. <laughs> climb up out of the water and boom, take that and then climb back into the water. Amazing. Amazing, the frog. Yeah. And then we got some uh Sort of yeah, extra Bill, funnies here. Bill yeah. Davidson. Submissions by uh, Bill Davidson, who I believe was a friend of Link's dad um, from the commercial art world. And yeah, he I was had made say some, that. Yeah. yeah. Super polished. Super polished. Submissions to, you know, some syndicate uh, 10, 15 years earlier. And, uh, and that helped fill out the, whatever, 24 pages we had to fill. Right. Right. Because, yeah, you see... 
a number of these in here. And then this story. Tell us about this one. Oh, yeah. yeah. I love yeah. this. Love is, that Chris this right? is that Chris Googleman as well? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, it came in towards the end. And uh, he said, oh, shoot, it's two pages. What do I do with it? Oh, I'll put them together. So he put the <laughs> two together so that he'd keep his page count where, where it was at that point. Um, right. <laughs> Uh, and, yeah. See, yeah, and then the spiral graph uh, effect, which happens again later on uh, or earlier with Spectre 13. There's a spiral graph uh, teleportation yeah, scene. Yeah, that's right. But, uh, yeah, where I, was that? Oh, yeah, here. You know, there it is. There it is, yeah. yeah. So what is that? I guess it was available, and it yeah. created a yeah. cool effect, and mm -hmm. <laughs> it wasn't like we had Illustrator or Photoshop or anything like that. No. No. So, yeah, of course not. Yep. So, um, and then we have this Spectre 13, I guess, painting on the back, Oil right? painting. Yeah. Oil oh, painting mm -hmm. on paper. Me too. And I, I know now that Link probably found that the oil leached away so quickly he couldn't really do much with it after <laughs> a, a day or so. <laughs> turned to chalk, so... <laughs> You know, he put in the time, so it was going to go on the back cover. So, yeah, it's cool. It's really cool. Nice yeah, touch. It is neat. And it so that's neat. it, it man. That there you is go. that is Power Comics issue number cover one, to cover. cover to cover. Awesome insight there. <laughs> Love it, man. I mean, it is. It, I I wasn't even sure. Like, I honestly wasn't even sure when I saw that image of the of the cover online the first time i wasn't sure if it was like a ad in in something else because i don't know if you know this but there is a canadian series called power comics from the 70s mm -hmm. um that ran like four issues i want to say and uh, it's it's definitely a little bit i i would say it's still it's still indie and amateur but i would say it's a little more refined but i mm -hmm. wasn't I, I thought this had something to do with that for years hmm. and so i was like hmm was this like an ad that they had or something for power comics out of out of canada um but uh no it's a completely separate different thing from probably you know almost 10 years earlier which is just mind-blowing so yeah and i can remember link talking about uh well we have to get this one out because i know of a guy who's also doing a power comics and and we want ours to be first wow right. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, amazing. It, it's an archetype, right? It's out there. We got we got to get it out there because I mean, what are we doing? We're all young guys and we're thinking about power. How can I get some power? All these adults have all the power. I want some of this power. Give me some Love power, it. man. Amazing. Amazing. So, um incredible um, you know, just well, amazing. So, 54 yeah, years we said. Was, 54 was... than half a century ago back when and... we were... <laughs> where where are you now with comics or how i mean what has happened in the last you know half yeah. a century here with your yeah. relationship to comics with the art or anything i want to know where you're at where, you know yeah um good question i well okay I, link lit a fire in me i didn't stop wanting to draw comics i i kept drawing comics while i was doing everything else commercial art and working my way through university, got a teaching degree, um, taught for a couple of years in Northern Quebec, came back to the place I'd gone to university in Manitoba because it's a nice small town and you can basically do your thing for not too much money. And um, did a lot of commercial art and kept sending samples into DC Comics. Mm. Um, wow. I didn't realize I was persistent until I looked back and in 1992, I had sent them samples every six months for five years so 10 wow. different sets of samples wow. and then finally christmas 92 i get a call from mike carlin going uh man of steel annual number three needs an anchor would you like to do that yes please <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing uh, uh, written amazing. for priest uh drawn beautifully by mark d bright and the very oh, first wow. panel that arrives by fedex is batman climbing through a porthole it was like you know Batman. Classic. I don't want to worry about that. There's Batman. Mm -hmm. True. An Elseworlds kind of thing. So cool. the Kryptonians had come to Earth to take over Earth. And uh, Batman was the underground uh, fighter, repeller of, of evilness, uh, trying to fight the Kryptonians oh, who've taken over the Earth. That's a, that's a cool premise. 
it was yeah. a great premise yeah that's really awesome and that. like boyhood dream so right i, worked, I mean like yeah, in, yeah. Boyhood dream dream come true i was yeah. i was in cloud nine for 18 months anyway and then oh. 60 hour weeks kind of began to catch up with me and, sure. and all i'm doing is drawing i'm working on hawk man's wings so inking inking oh, inking wow. away and then death stroke and and the only conversations i'm having with is is my wife and i'm i'm a social guy i'm trained as a teacher i like to work with people so uh got it uh when i got a call it was after about 10 years of it i got a call from the local high school saying we need a halftime commercial art teacher and i said okay i'll go back and try that and I love that again. It was just so much fun. And it, it coincided with the end of an era at DC Comics in terms of future positions and future work. So uh, that turned into working, teaching web design at the community college. And now I'm uh, at the university again, where I started um, helping profs who want to try new things when they're teaching. So that's, that's my main job. Nice. Incredible. And it gives me lots of time to draw and paint. So I'm still drawing, still painting and uh, still oh, working awesome. on thinking about comic book ideas. Yeah. Yes. Well, Fantastic. let me just throw this out there. I mean, we unearthed a power comic from which what one? the seventies uh, earth man. Oh yeah. Which uh, oh, yeah. Uh, the artist at the ripe old age of 92, three, two, three, three. made wow. a sequel sequel to, Yes, the comic. So my man, we want. Yeah. <laughs> we're yeah. extending that invite to you. If you there's wanna... precedence for this, yeah, and on this channel, so yeah, you know, yeah. You well, pick, you know what? Yeah, pick up quarterstaff again. Hey, man. Yeah, we will publish when, when, it. When, if the mysterious Link Yako and I can ever connect, oh my, uh, God. we'll get the band back together. We'll, we'll our <laughs> yes. <comic> number two. <laughs> oh. That would be, oh, that'd be amazing. That'd be incredible. That would be amazing. Oh my God. I'd love that. It would be fun. Yeah. Too Those, bad. Uh, okay. It comes out every 666 months or something. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> that would be incredible. Oh my God. If that worked out. Uh, yeah. Too bad. Uh, Link was unable to join us, uh, but you know, you got to keep some of the, some of it, you know, behind the curtain, some of it a little mysterious. Who knows? Maybe there'll be a That's follow up. Great. We'll get them back on. We'll do something. Maybe you guys will collab on something. We'll, you know, We'll yeah. definitely have you Hopefully guys back on the show. you told enough lies that he's going to be enraged. <laughs> That's right. And That's need right. to call in and the I gotta the correct straight. the record here. I got to correct yeah. the record. <laughs> right. I'm waiting for that. Waiting yeah, for you should have just said, "Oh, I did all of this." He had yeah. to do any of this. Yeah, of course, amazing. Well, um yeah. Thank you so much, Kurt, for joining us, man. This was a crash right, course that I never knew I'd ever get. <laughs> um, it's 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 incredible. I'm sure our viewers are gonna love this. You know, I mean, this is, you know, like this is the origin story of Power Comics itself. Not just your Power Comics, but also our Power Comics in a lot of ways. Because it's like mm. the the this sort of DIY do it yourself thing wasn't as commonplace back then, um, or maybe it was, but it didn't it didn't get published and it didn't get out there into the world as much as it would you know, in the 70s and 80s. And so to see something from 1969 that had a color cover that's out there in the world that somehow, you know, I found 54 years later somewhere, it's, it's just, it's amazing. And so this mm -hmm. sort of exemplifies everything we love, you know, with this <laughs> genre we also coincidentally call, or maybe not coincidentally, Power Comics. Awesome. I, yes. Power Comics is my origin story too. I, yeah. Thanks to Link, I learned an awful lot, and it gave me a good career for a good long time, and helped me to see there was a place for somebody to draw. Amazing! Can oh you God, um, amazing. show that art one more time? Sorry, now that I have the sure camera yeah. working. All right, let's see. Wow! Well, and so oh you were drawing God. during you were drawing this during our interview? Yeah, yeah. And wow. if, if Link had been on, I would have had more. He would have been talking more, and I would have been drawing more. But uh, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Show us the That's quarter incredible. staff, isn't that? Is that quarter staff you drew in the corner there? Yeah, quarter staff's in the background there. He's leaping from the other uh, rooftop to uh, take out the kneecap of Bog. Or oh, maybe gosh. we're actually going to be friends oh. after all. I don't know. Uh, that's awesome. I'll leave it to Link to decide what the story is going to be. <laughs> awesome, <laughs> amazing. All right. Well, thank you so much, and uh, yeah, man, we'll have you back anytime. And uh, man, excellent work. Awesome. Thanks, Kurt. Thank, Thank you, Kurt. Bye-bye.